listening to the Latina Leadership Podcast, the podcast made for Latinas by Latinas, with Angelica Cáceres, Carolina Arenas, Diana Ruby, Jacqueline Villa Gomez, and Sonia Ramirez. Get comfortable, amiga, and enjoy the conversations. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Latina Leadership Podcast. My name is Angelica Cáceres. I am one of your co-hosts. Ladies. Hola, I'm Diana, one of the co-hosts. Hi, I'm Carolina. Hi, I'm Sonia. Ladies, welcome. It's been some time now that we've gotten together and had, uh, no, I'm lying because we did it during the Mother Day series. Um, but it's been a while that we actually have talked, talked in, in such an intimate way for quite some time. We wanted to kick off this season going back and looking at some conversations that we've had in the past um, and, and kicking off the fun fact that uh, I think the season is going to drop right around or right before Hispanic Heritage Month. And one of the things that we're doing collectively is, um, like Carolina, not only celebrating Poder Hispano, um, but also the Latin Entrepreneurship Day, where we're we're hosting, we're celebrating Latin entrepreneurs. Uh, Carolina, I know you're one. Uh, you've done several amazing interviews with some amazing guests, which is what we're going to touch on today. Today's topic is we're going to go back. Well, we did already. We went back, we revisited some of the conversations, and we're going to have this little touchy, touchy t subject. And we're going to go back and have this little touchy topic about Latinas and entrepreneur. So uh, the task was to go back and select some entrepreneurs. I know a lot of y'all remember some of the entrepreneurs that we went back and touched on, but Diana, do you want to go ahead and start us off, kick us off on on um, exactly what it is that this episode is going to be completely about? Yeah, for sure. So well, we all went back and listened to some of the interviews that we did with some really cool, badass entrepreneurs. Um, and so uh, one of them is bringing coffee back with Andrea Arana, and she's the owner of Las Perras Cafe there in Houston. Uh, and so that interview was with Carolina, and uh, we're going to get into that. Then we also went back and listened to a story of resilience and determination with Patricia Boral. And that interview, um, Carolina and I did it together, and that was a really amazing story. Um, so I'm really excited to dig more into that. We also went back and listened to Merging Cafe y Cultura with Catherine Gonzalez. Uh, Carolina and Sonia did that interview, and I'm probably gonna say that's one of my favorite, inter most favorite in interviews because it was just so fun, and there was so much nerding out around coffee, and it was really cool. <laughs> um, and then the other episode we're going to talk about today is the Elizabeth Caro jewelry interview that um, Angelica did with the owner Elizabeth. Um, so really excited. There's just kind of a good range of entrepreneurship in these episodes. And yeah, let's get into it. Nice. So one of the things that I did, uh, I did want to mention very quickly is we're going to, ladies, I don't want to play it safe that they're amazing entrepreneurs because they are. We know that already. That's why we interview them. But Jesus heavens, being an entrepreneur, and you ladies know that it 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 comes with its own difficulties. It comes with its own barriers. It comes with its own strides. And uh, and I want to touch on those too. So uh, let's not hold back, ladies. Let's let's go ahead and give those conversations. Uh, Diana, do you want to kick us off on our first on our first question? Yeah. Well, first, also, if y'all have your experiences with entrepreneurship, like bring that in as we're as we're talking. Um, so I'm wondering if and did anybody's entrepreneurship journey surprise you um, as they were all each of them talked about how they got into entrepreneurship. So just kind of, you know, did anybody's story surprise you or catch you off guard and you're like, oh, wow, like I would not have seen them uh, going into entrepreneurship or seen that playing out that way I think I think it's their initial stories why they started um I don't think it was a surprise it's never a surprise mm -hmm. that they're doing it it's always uh, a revelation as to like why they started and I know uh I know for for Elizabeth I think she was she came down and then she wanted like simple jewelry that was nice but better quality. So she didn't want the, uh, my sister Erica used to say chippy, chippy jewelry, <laughs> chippy, the kind that would like, you know, the post on your earring would like fall off. 
<laughs> I'm trying to put it on. <laughs> she wanted quality stuff and it was like handmade, like um, out of the country and she would get it sent here. And then of course she would sell it and she would do some of her own designs. Um, but that's what she wanted. And I know with like uh, Perras Cafe, Carolina, uh, cause I was behind the camera as I heard y'all like having that conversation. Hers and the Patricia Boral, those two stood out to me. I mean, like you said, all four of them stood out to me um, but those two in particular, right? So like with the Perras Coffee, just going from selling it at like vendor events, because that's where I met her too at markets to then see her open up a location, right? Um, that was pretty cool. And then interviewing her like with the whole setup, that was different for me as a podcast co-host. Um, but yeah, hers, hers stood out. And then with Patricia, it was just more of like the family history, I think is what hit me the most because being like, you know, one of the oldest from the siblings, like, what do you do when you no longer have your parents around? And it's just shocking how, you know, you have decisions that you make that lead you to different paths. So I think that's the one that stood out to me the most that, you know, the decision to become a business and, you know, and, and thrive was the one that they chose or that they were able to complete and are still completing. So. Uh, mm -hmm. how life was like for them and how that turned out and how like they ended up where they are now to see that that reigning success to hear the backstory you think to yourself mm -hmm. there's no way I would have made it out of that yeah. there's no mm -hmm. way I would have like it, it, it's in the slightest been able to survive any of that history oh, con más ganas lo hacen, you know I that's know. like a push to yeah I know so it, it can go both ways yeah I think what stood out to me, the two that stood out to me were Patricia's story and Catherine's because, um, you know, I, I met her, you know, at the San Antonio Festival and, and I just felt an immediate connection with her. So I was happy that I was able to reach out and, and bring her on the show. But I think what stood out about some of these is that some people don't have a choice. It's like mm -hmm. it's entrepreneurship or nothing for them to survive. It's not like, oh, I'm going to try this and see if it's going to work out. It's like this is they they have to kind of make this work. They're depending on this. And that's what I got from Patricia's story. Like they had no choice. And that's so true for so many people. I mean, there's some people, you know, they're, they're trying it. And if it doesn't work, OK, then I'll go back, you know, to corporate America or whatever. But then there's some people that's not an option. Mm -hmm. So that's I found that to be very like eye opening for yeah. when I was listening to Patricia's story. And, and her family story to entrepreneurship. Oh yes, goodness. and I love that. Um, I think they all kind of brought that up about being Latina entrepreneurs and and having to work um, double as hard. Or you know, if they were told no uh, two times, they'd ask again a third time. Or you know, just kind of being um, persistent and pushing forward with with that vision that they had. I really love that. Yeah, I think I think um, Angelica, like thank you, like Catherine. Um, that's because I'm not an entrepreneur. I mean, my experience with entrepreneurship was my grandparents, you know, when I was, uh, before I was even born, you know, my grandmother had a flower shop, um, out there on the, by Kashmir. I don't know what area that is of Houston, but by, um, uh, Collingsworth. Northside um, girl, so, you should know better yeah, than that. So I, I, grew up, <laughs> I grew up there when I was a little girl, you know, that's when my grandparents had their, their little casita. <laughs> But um, my uh, grandma had a flower shop, you know, and I have a picture. I wrote a story about it when I was at the mm -hmm. Chronicle. I got, I'm so happy that I got to write a story about their entrepreneurial journey. And it's because of that spirit that I think, you know, I am where I am today. They laid the foundations. They laid the bricks down for their future generations to be able to succeed in this in this uh, world. So I'm very thankful to them. My only um uh, regret is that I wish I would have kept it going because I would have loved to take over like a flower business. I love flowers and I see my daughter loves plants. And at first I was like, man, why does she like plants so much? This house is full of plants. And you know what? It, it might be my abuelita in her. It just might be that part of my abuelita that's in her that she likes to take care of plants and see them grow. And, you know, um, with Catherine, I know she was talking about imposter syndrome. You know, and maybe that's might be some reason why I don't think about going down that entrepreneurial journey. Like, I don't feel like that's something that I, I could do, you know, um, but he, I, it's like all of them mentioned. They all had a plan. They all had an idea of what they wanted their business to be and look like. 
And it's so important to know what you want to put out there, what you want to sell to the community. So that's, you know, a big, um, a big reason why I guess I'm not an entrepreneur, you know, because I don't, I don't feel like there's, I don't feel that calling. Mm -hmm. So I am very much, you know, impressed and, and I admire all of these uh, women who shared their story and their journey, because I guess a part of me wishes I could be an entrepreneur, you know, and be my own, be my own boss in some ways. But then I also know myself and I don't know, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. It but. does. It does. It does. Uh, because we connect with entrepreneurs in a different way. And I like the fact that you shared your family story. I'll share mine. My dad had, uh, he was a, he's a bricklayer and he also, he, the thing with my dad is he was, he is still alive, very talented person. Uh, he's very good with his hands and he's very creative. He's a very much like an artisan at what he does and at his craft. And so one of the things that he's well known for actually right now is he's a bricklayer, but he's able to do articles with the bricks and able to like uh, geometrically do them pretty nicely where he gets hired on and that's all he has to do. Like this man, he's never out of a job. He just doesn't want to work but that's a different story. Um, but in addition, so back in the day when him and my mom first got together and they had just my uh, oldest siblings, um, they had a taller in Nuevo Laredo and they would do uh, the metal framework. So it was, um, you know, the planters that they sell sometimes at Hobby Lobby and they're made of, of metal and they look like uh, little carritos or they look like, mm -hmm. or the quinceanera chairs, the really big ones that look like a throne. My dad would make those in, wow. in Nuevo Laredo and my mom would go out and sell them. And she would mm -hmm. go out and ask for pedidos and she would go demonstrate what they were and they would, she would tell my dad, this is how many needed, uh, to the point where my dad was able to hire several uh, men to work at the taller and my mom knew the process of how to make him. And so when my dad wasn't there to be able to, to, or didn't want to be there to do it, she would just have the men do it, uh, do those things. And so my dad had the craft and my mom had the mentality. So they worked really well together um, back then. So what my mom would do was to sell it and continue to sell it. And then sometimes she would sell it to some stores. Had they continued, had all of this not fallen apart, I can't imagine just like you, Sonia, to think what would it be like for us mm -hmm. to have able to take it over such a, such a, a, a passionate like thing that had started off my dad didn't have to try had his skill he didn't have to try he it was just something that he just got it came natural to him and he just went for it and my mom just like was like oh we're taking advantage of this right we're gonna make money and we're not gonna depend on anybody and we're gonna do the best that we can they were able to excel and succeed and all that other great stuff but when i when i go back and i that that mentality and that shift of that entrepreneurship um I feel like for me, uh, I, I can be dead set on certain things and I need a shift, right? I need to be able, and I think that's one of the things that I learned from these entrepreneurs is their mentality to be able to shift. Mm -hmm. Whether they started for fun, whether they started for whatever, they were just like, uh, no, we're gonna keep going. Let's see how far they can take it. And when you think about it, you think to yourself, like, dang, if this is only 20% of what you're putting in, imagine if you were to put in, you know, an extra 20, an extra 80, where would you be, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. so that that's one of the things that, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to, I wanted to mention that. That's, and that's interesting that you mentioned that, like, when I was listening to Andrea's story, you know, um, she talked about learning the ins and outs of your business. And that includes everything from accounting, marketing, the corporate side, employee relations, you know, you know, how to figure out how to do all that. And it just makes me go back to my grandparents. You know, they probably didn't know how to do all those things. They just knew how to, you know, have their flower shop and sell the flowers. But imagine had they had the information they needed back then to run the business and the backside, it could be here. You know, I could be in a flower shop, you know, today. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but that that just touched that just you know hit, really hit home what you said on Helica for me that reminded me too of uh at, in Patricia's interview she talked a lot about mindset and 
I mean, I was in the conversation and I remember like being in and I was like, oh my God, I want to take notes, but I'm, I'm listening and I'm also engaging in conversation. But when I was listening back, like I, I had the same thoughts of like, wow, uh, I feel like she really gave that kind of uh, introspection to, to think about what mindset shift can look like and gave like actually actionable steps for people that you know are interested in uh becoming entrepreneurs and uh just especially towards the end i think she was uh giving some like really ge really good gems i was like oh wow yeah the same thing with that i took away from hers was that like there's actual you can go back and, and listen to the interview and take notes and take something away that you could actually utilize if you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or even you know, taking steps towards that. Um, I don't know. You guys have me thinking about so much stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, because Carolina? I want to I wanna you hear gotta you. your bills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of times people don't start a business because, like, they might have the idea. They have, like, everything, everything. But they're like, holy cow, well, if I go that way, I can't pay my bills. That's so they, they can't leave your nine-to-five job because, That's you know, awesome unless mm -hmm. you have funds. And then another thing mm -hmm. that a lot of people get into debt with is because they're like, okay, well, I'm going to start my business. Well, here I go taking out a loan. Here I go using a credit card. Um, mm -hmm. So I think financially is, is how do I say it? To, the, to those that started it from scratch and made it work into a big business, I admired the shit mm -hmm. out of them. Because mm -hmm. I, for instance, share, share my story. Yeah, I'm, I guess now I can say I'm an entrepreneur. I have my small business, but I'm always honest about it. Is it something that I pay my bills with? No, it, it doesn't. It, you know, like, yeah, it helps out with certain things. But for me to tell you like, oh, my God, my business is so well that I pay my mortgage. I pay my car. No, we have my husband and I have a business that does that that took us 11 years to build and that's the one that holds us down but my little small business is 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 for me you know I, i'm keeping it alive but the reason i'm sharing that is because i was able to start my small business because i am financially stable to do so there are people that cannot because they just you could just can't and again, you could, right, looking at the resources that banks offer or, you know, the SBA small business loans and all that stuff. So I think that people could start their own businesses. They just need to align with the right financial help in order to do so, so that they don't get into bigger debt or, or start it the wrong way. Like if you're going to do something, starting a business, do it the right way with the right people. That's hard because you never know who the right thing and right the right people. It's all <laughs> trial and error sometimes. Well, people that are real, real yeah. banks, real, yeah. you know, there's so many, what is it? The SBA, isn't it? The mm -hmm. Small Business yes. Administration. Uh -huh. They have resources that people can look at. I mean, the public library has resources online. Um, but yeah, just make sure you, you, you go to the right, you know, credible resources, to be not like the corner store that tells you, hey, we'll give you $5. <laughs> Not the payday loans. Don't do that. Yeah. Or your chambers, like local chambers, like stuff mm -hmm. like that. They, uh, there was, I, I was reading some, y'all you know, I'm a fascinated lunatic with freaking reading reports and data and blah, 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 blah. And Helica I can't fucking get enough of it. Right? You're my girl. Uh, uh, I don't do it. We got you. We're good. Uh, no me aguanto. No me aguanto because I always have to bring no, it up at numbers. some point. I'm like, tell me, tell me. I love that because <laughs> I'm the so, same way. <laughs> Latinos, I believe when I read, it was about 70% start with their own money. They start with their own funds. They take out, they don't take out loans. They take out their savings um, and they indebt themselves, not knowing, uh, not knowing that they're indebting themselves to themselves, not actually using mm -hmm. credit cards, but using their own money. They self-finance a lot what they do. So, Instead of, uh, in addition to like paying their mortgage, it's like, oh, my business needs an ex extra thousand or two thousand this this month. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we we kickstart off ourselves a lot, and so when you invest your own money, it's hard to uh, it's it's hard to give up on it because you know all that money went into that. Mm -hmm. I think that was me and Juan. We actually we cashed out on a lot of our our savings. 
right? To be able to sustain what we were doing for like a couple of months to kick this off to see if it worked, to see if it worked at some point at some capacity. Uh, but Latinos don't, they don't even know where to look for these resources, right? Mm -hmm. We know, right, the SBA, but then the SBA only has some information. Uh, the library, yeah, you, it tells you, but honestly, it's, it's, it comes sometimes to a place of who you know, right? When you, how you network, what you're mm -hmm. doing, um, because that's how you hear of some of those grants that nobody is talking about. Mm -hmm. That's how you hear of some of those loans, right? Uh, whatever, whatever got a million dollars to be able to give out small business loan. And the, uh, what they're asking for is minimal and you'll get a good five, $10,000 to be able to continue. Mm -hmm. For a business owner, a, a solopreneur, which a lot of Latinas are solopreneurs, um, that's like seventy five percent of your time looking for grants and loans. What that's yeah. that's all your time. So mm -hmm. where does the rest of your time go? Which is why they prefer to self finance. All that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's I can see the difficulty and I can see the the want, the passion. Right. So. You know, Carolina, when you were talking about this is one of the things is why you continue doing it is because the nace, like mm -hmm. it, you, it's a passion at some point. It has to be, you have to believe in what you're doing. Just like the, just like the Boral sisters, they're like, now nah, we know what we're talking about and we're yeah. going to continue, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that they have each other uh, mm -hmm. to be able to support on each other, like helps, right? But for the solopreneurs, you know, that struggle, I lean into my husband um, as an entrepreneur and I can bounce things off of him. But cuando anda sola, it's different. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. different. And so how a question, if you could tell one of those solopreneurs one thing as and and ladies, please uh, chime in because um Diana, you used to work at the entrepreneurs directly yourself at your nonprofit. If you could tell these solopreneur Latinas one thing that you've seen or that you learned or even listening to these interviews, what would you tell them? I think Patricia may have said it best. Um, you have to leave the fear behind. But that's like across the board with anything you do in life. If you want to try anything, you have to leave the fear. And I know that's easier said than done. But with with that fear, you're never going to be able to move forward. You're always going to stay where you're at, you know, and uh, I mean, I, that's a that's a good example. I mean, I, I wouldn't be here with you ladies if I didn't overcome a certain fear, you know, to to be here and be with you talking about, you know, these wonderful, inspiring uh, entrepreneurs, you know, so I think it's, it's important to believe in yourself and overcome that fear. I agree with Sonia and what Patricia mentioned. And then another theme that I think I saw across a lot of the interviews we did was leaning towards someone that is already doing what you're doing. Mm. I mean, not leaning, but like reaching out, you know, and saying, hey, this is my idea. What's worked for you? What hasn't? And I know Juan and Angelica have been good at making a point of mentorship. Um, so I feel like that's something that I would advise someone going into, you know, whatever field they're going into, whether it's entrepreneur or not, just seek a mentor that aligns with what you're going for. Uh, one of the things that I heard in Elizabeth's interview, and I think is just true in what I've seen with entrepreneurs is um, you got to be real that it's going to be, it's going to be hard. And <laughs> there are going to be times where you do want to just throw in the towel and be like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> um, but you have to, you know, keep going and, and just kind of um, leaning into that, like persistence and, and really believing in what it is that you want to create in order to move forward with it. Cause it's going to get hard. <laughs> it does a really, actually really great, great, great ass. Uh, things to be able to tell entrepreneurs who are either starting off or have one, two years, or even if they have experience and they're struggling, right? There's, they're six years in seven, eight years in. Um, but for me, what I would tell them is, uh, in addition to the fear and keep going is that, um, it's, it's going, you're going to fail some way, somehow at something, 
you're going to either fail at the marketing, you're going to fail at the whatever, you're going to have a product that's just not going to work. And it's going to fail. It's going to fail. There's going to be times where things are going to be embarrassing. Uh, There's going to be moments where you're just going to cringe at yourself and think, what the fuck was that? (laughs) Who the fuck am I? What what was that? You're going to cringe. And all those, those funky, like nasty feelings that we all try to avoid, it's going to come. It's going to happen. Now, what's the trivial on that is what do you, what happens? What do you do after that happens to you? Do you continue? How do you, how do you overcome that? And that's what people actually pay attention to. Not only are they looking, the reason they're looking at your downfall is because they want to see how you pick yourself back up. I, and I'm, I'm, I think for me, I, 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 I see that. I see why people are so vigilant as to what something failed for you. It's not to like, oh my God, ha ha ha. No, it's like, oh shit, how's she going to get up? How is she going to get up? Is she going to do it? Is she going to reach out? What is she going to do? And you'll be surprised when your come up is come up, people will applaud, applaud it. They see the, the persistence because they know that what you have is what you have and the passion that you're pouring into it is worth it for you. Mm-hmm. And is that worth it for you? Is it worth it? Is the risk worth it for you? Was the embarrassment worth it for you? Was that cringy moment worth it for you <laughs> to be able to continue continue down these journeys. Um, I see it sometimes I hear a lot of the times the cringiest moments that some of the entrepreneurs like think it's like, you know, uh, at the beginning of my entrepreneurship, I was scammed out of $20,000, 20K. And I was like, holy shit. Like those moments come for some entrepreneurs and you're like, and you continued? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 I did. Um, but so, yeah, I would tell those entrepreneurs it's, it's, it's when you fail at those moments is what do you do? How do you pivot? And it's not because people are going to pay attention. And I just say that because I love to watch entrepreneurs to see how they pivot, how they do that. Um, and it's in no way ever to like be judgy or laugh at them. It's just like, all right, girl, get up. How are you going to do it? Get up. How are you going to do it? Because maybe you're going to do something that I didn't think about doing. And I'm like, ha. <laughs> Look at the way she did that. Holy shit. She set the president. She's setting the path and she's on fire. And I line up right behind her. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know the I know, I know we, we focused on this one a lot, but there was another question. No, no, that was um, I love that. Uh, the other question that I had for you guys is, is there a leadership quality in any of these entrepreneurs that really stood out to you? Um, or maybe you're like, oh, I, let me get some of that, or I need, I would like to develop that kind of skill or quality. I'm thinking. Can I hop in here? Cause yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead. One of the no. I, I love, this one's all you. <laughs> yes, one of the reasons I loved your guys's interview with Catherine was because of how much like nerding out on coffee happened throughout that conversation. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, Imagine me in person there. Coffee education. The festival. Oh I was worse. Like she was deep in knowledge about coffee. And like, you know, Carolina, you asked her a question about like, is it better to buy the beans whole or have them grinded? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And she, yeah, I'm, gave, I'm, gave, I'm, gave, yeah. She gave, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. I love coffee. I love coffee, right? Um, and then again, having family that's had mm-hmm. a farm in Colombia that produces coffee, they don't export, but it's just within the country. But having that conversation with her reminded me of the advice my husband has always given me. So back in the day, like let's say like 15 years ago or 10, I told him, I was like, oh my God, how cool would it be to have a coffee shop with like, you know, um, tables that don't match where people can come and stand up poetry. And he was like, oh, okay. He was like, oh, and you, you want, you're going to serve curl coffee, right? And I was like, yeah, you know, we can have like this and that. And he's like, okay, if you want to do that, go learn how to make coffee, go learn how to make a cappuccino, go learn how to make a latte. So What I take away from that is you have to be an expert in your line of business. Like if she had started selling business hacia la loca and not knowing or not being able to tell us those details, like who knows if she would have made it this far, right? But like 
she knows her stuff. She knows so her stuff. <laughs> I think that's another advice, right? Like if you're an entrepreneur, like know what you're selling, know what you're like, just know your stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I love that interview too. She was so like I'm telling you, she she could give a coffee like class. I told her we could do a documentary on her on her life, on her experience. I told we will go with you. We'll go oh, with take you me. To the yeah, Latina yes. podcast goes to Guatemala. See, <laughs> or Costa Rica, wherever. I she's think going. she did invite you at one point. She was like, "Yeah, come with me where I source my coffee beans," and I was like, "Oh, I'll go. <laughs> that, that's an open invite." Y'all don't know, but y'all are coming. We're gonna film exactly. this documentary. <laughs> We're jumping into documentaries. I can yep. do that. <laughs> American Airlines, Delta sponsorship. Any uh, airline? On. <laughs> United, somebody. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> I think one of the things uh, that uh, several leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, lead, like their leadership qualities that I definitely admire is the fact that they, uh, the resistance, the, mm. the, the, the heavy hits they take and they persist, they mm-hmm. keep going. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. they they pour a lot in love into like what they do. Uh, and you can tell too, you can tell a lot of the times about when they start talking about their business and they start talking about like what they do and how they do the things that they need to get to where they need to get to. Yeah, it's that passion. It's that passion and that, that want to learn. Mm-hmm. I think any really good leader knows and understands that you don't stop learning. They're just, all of these ladies determined, determined to start this business, determined to make it a success, determined even more importantly to give back to their community, to give their community something they want. I mean, look at Catherine and um, Andrea, coffee. You know, they, they gave the, the world coffee and there's plenty of coffee connoisseurs out there. There's two of us right here, me and, me and Carolina, yeah. you know, um, but it's just bringing a product that, you know, the, the world, you know, is going to enjoy. I admire that so much. I wish I would have thought of that. Like, I wish I would, I would like to open up a coffee shop too, but it's like you said, you got to learn how to make the coffee. You got to learn you know, where to get your source, your beans, you got to learn, you know, about the backside of how much money are these farmers, like um, Catherine was talking about, how much money are the farmers really getting? It was surprising to find out not much, you know, that's another, you know, big problem there. Mm -hmm. Um, But just everything, everything that's involved with uh, your business is just, it's, it's interesting, you know, and how they make it work, how they put all the pieces together and just keep moving forward. I think another thing that was really admirable for me in these conversations was how each of them brought their Latinidad to their business and um, in, into just like be, being entrepreneurs. Um, Cause I think each one of them talk, talked about that. Um, mm-hmm. But I know Patricia and her story, she was specifically saying how she almost, she had to do that shift where you know, initially people would, she would try to have business conversations and people would um, ask her about her accent. And she, you know, Mm -hmm. had to kind of like make that shift of like, okay, well, let's, you know, engage in conversation about this. Um, Or Catherine bringing to the forefront Guatemala Guatemala specifically, but just Central America as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think that was, um, that intentionality is, is really amazing. So a question what is what is one thing that you feel like the Latin entrepreneurs? Because I'll say it like this: um, when when you think a lot about entrepreneurship, I'm shifting. I'm shifting, ladies, because I'm trying to get my question out there, knowing and understanding what I'm trying to say. When we think about entrepreneur, we think a lot about money, correct? Because yeah. that's that's the ultimate mm-hmm. goal, right? It's to be able to sustain yourself, or or Carolina, like you're like what you mentioned is entrepreneurship just kind of like a state of mind or is it just or is that end goal of like money because for me I can't think about money because it's it, I start to like freak out like I just I start to like tense up uh Juan gets mad at me because he's like Angelica um we can't do everything for free <laughs> I'm like why not um but um I, I don't I try not to think about the money I just try to think about the work Right. And how much I want to do the work, because if I think about the money, if I start to mix the two, I I just I like I would throw in the towel. 
right? I would just yeah. be like, ah. So I know the basics of what uh, what contracts are being signed and maybe perhaps at how much and, and who's doing what part of the work. And that's it. Not how much is going out. Juan wants to know the numbers. How much is that costing? And how much are we charging? And how much I'm like, oh, I don't know. You have to, though. I know. As a re- if, you, if you are a true entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you have to know your numbers. You, you just have to. You, if, if you're buying your coffee, okay, how much is it, you know, how much does one bag cost? How much am I going to sell it for? What is my wholesale price? I have a coffee shop. I, you know, I need to pay electricity. I need to pay the worker. I need to pay the system where I charge everybody how they're paying me. Like you have to know your numbers or else you're going to end up in zero. You're going to end up in the red and debt. And then that's when all that other yeah. stuff comes up. That or also you take a chance of someone coming in and playing you for a dummy and stealing money from you or mm-hmm. or just doing the wrong transactions. You have to know your numbers. That's something that in the beginning, too, I dealt with where I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just buy this. Oh, and then I'll pay this. And then I'll snap it. Like I didn't really, you know, like a la loca. I started my stuff at la loca, to be honest. But again, here comes my husband, or, you know, business person that I know he is. And hey, Carol, your numbers, you have to know your numbers. Mm. Because at the end of the day, if you're putting all in the work, are you paying yourself? Are you really making money? Is it profitable? It, you, yeah, I can't yeah. stress enough. You need to know your numbers. And if you don't want to know your numbers and hire somebody that does it for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to pay them also. <laughs> And you gotta make sure you trust them too. So yeah, yeah. So what what did you what did you see in in this in, in, in talking about money? Like, where is it then that is it all about money? Should it should entrepreneurship be all about money? Then should it be like how much are you gaining, or is it just a, a hobby? When does it stop becoming a hobby and start becoming like revenue centered, where you're making money? Do you feel like that's a fine line? Some entrepreneurs like I think walk it's both. Yeah, I think for business owners, the first thing that drives them to become business is the passion in what they do. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a dentist, opening a dentist, you, you know, like, or you're selling artisan products, it's that passion and idea that you have. But then once you have that, you need stability to continue it and you need financial stability for everything. I mean, at the end of the day, you still got to pay your taxes and you know, or fill out tax papers and all that stuff. And you can't fill out tax papers with passion. You need numbers for that one. <laughs> you can't play you know? your employees so with passion you either. Both. You need both. Yeah. You need both. And if there's things that you cannot do because you know you just, maybe it's just not you, then you got to learn how to delegate. Mm. You know, like, okay, I'm not a numbers person. I need to hire a CPA or a HR person or... One of the reasons that I mentioned that it's because sometimes the hardest part for Latinas and entrepreneurs is the scaling part. So let's get into that, the scaling part. Perra's Cafe was an amazing, she had amazing like idea. She opened, uh, she partnered with somebody to be able to open that small cafe during the morning and they became a different establishment at night. And so she was able to do that. Um, And she talked about Maybe I shouldn't say this, but on the side, she talked about how things just didn't work out for her when she was trying to work something else out. But she's no longer at that location, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah. So she went back to to what her her strategy was prior to to Mm -hmm. being able to that brick and mortar place. Um, So when we talk about failures in in entrepreneurship and being able to scale I think that's where it starts to get really funky and really like that's when fear sets in when uh, entrepreneurs try to scale and try to step outside of the block of being a being a solopreneur but then the other thing right going to back to Patricia mindset like why do we have to label as a failure Mm. like my like if I was her right with Perras Mm. Cafe I'd be like man that just wasn't my journey that's it my time to be in a brick and mortar was just these three weeks and maybe in those three weeks, I met someone that I would have never met because I had the brick and mortar. I would have never maybe had the podcast interview, you know, or. That's why like building your team, I think is important. I like what Patricia, well, she shared, I think it was her sister that went into business with somebody and it didn't work and realizing 
you know, that sometimes the people you go into business with, it's, it's not going to work. And then you kind of have to start over again. And she just got lucky that her and her sister were on the same page and they could make their their business work. And I like what she said, that they, they put together an operating agreement. Okay. So they have it down, like what they're responsible for. And this is what she's responsible for. And I thought, wow, you do that with your family and it works. <laughs> it's like, imagine if everybody did that. Because most people are not in business with, with uh, their family. They're in business, they have a business partner, you know, so I'm always interested in seeing how does that partnership work? How does it click? How do you, how did you become successful? You know, mm -hmm. how did, how did you build that up so that your business is thriving today? Because mm -hmm. I think that's what, where you to align yourself with the right people so yeah. your business will grow. Or doing, there's a lot of people that do business with their family, but mm -hmm. because they are family. They don't do it the right way. So again, this is something my mom taught me. Some people don't like it. They're like, oh, no, you got to trust your family. I understand. Family is family. Yes, I trust them. But when you're doing business, it's business. Mm -hmm. So do it the right way. Just because you're going to business with your mom does not mean you still don't have legal things that you should sign. God forbid something happens. Because at the end of the day, something that I've seen, I guess, from the social work side of my world is money changes people. Mm -hmm. Death changes, you know, mm -hmm. death, family death changes people, money. So you never know. So mejor hacer las cosas bien from the beginning mm -hmm. to avoid any any issues down the road. You know, I've always heard too um, that you, you shouldn't go into business with friends or you shouldn't work with friends. And I've learned that the hard way. I have to be honest. You know, I can't, I won't say anything, but, you know, it, it doesn't work. You know, and then you, have, you risk the ruining that relationship. You know, you got to know when it's time to get out. So you salvage the friendship that you had, you know, and going into business or working for somebody that, mm -hmm. that you know, it's not always going to work out. And don't stop yourself from doing it, though. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. there's ones that do work. There's some that do. You do it there's the right way from the beginning work. and you won't have yeah. issues. <laughs> there's some that do work. I guess I've had too many negative ones that I'm like. You know, I guess gun shy or it's like the walls are up. It's like, no, oh, mindset, know. remember mindset. <laughs> yeah, it can be scary, but there are some partnerships that do work out. And then, you know what I, what, you know what I learned though? Start off small, start off with small projects. Mm -hmm. uh, and see how those turn out because y'all can just maintain a small project like where y'all just get together once a year and y'all do like mm -hmm. a pop-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to extend into everything that you do. Um, in regards to like uh, your business, they don't have to be completely folded in. But yeah, some partnerships do work and some of them just have to remain on surface level and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think just any like final highlights from the episodes that you guys heard that you wanted to make sure we talked about. For me, is just make sure to listen, guys. There's some good stuff out there. <laughs> when you ladies were interviewing, is that... I forget her name. Y'all are really, I'm terrible at names, but I re I can tell if I listen to voices and I see their faces. Coffee. I think one of the things that she was talking about was um, being able to scale and how to how to scale her business. That's what I was, before I was, and really interrupted by my computer filing on me. I was, was scaling her business, being able to scale whatever merchandise she has, um, I think when we know something and sometimes some of us are terrible at finding information and being like, you know, who really have really good use of this information is so-and-so. we never send dates. We never like say, hey, this thing is happening and you might be able to like uh, go for it. We're like, I, I think we're, we're afraid to feel like we're bothering people or not wanting to help for us as the people who are on the outside of, we see somebody doing amazing things and we're like, we lend out, like send them links of things that you read or things that might help them. Uh, it, if somebody else, they might already know, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't matter for us to like continue to like uh, helping, right? A grant that we know that might be perfect for it or something like that. Uh, for me, it was the question that we asked after all of the conversations of like, do you consider yourself a leader? Why, why not? Um, we only had one of these ladies saying not really, but uh, it's always curious to me, like what people are gonna say. And um, I just, I'm just stuck on Latinas are redefining leadership and leadership doesn't have to look one way. So um, I really, that really stood out to me uh, with all of these ladies. 
what you know what I'm what stood out or what I'm seeing and not just among these ladies, but, you know, I, I watch a lot of, you know, news. I read a lot of articles. That's just, you know, me, you know, but I see that um, uh, people are just thriving today at every age. I mean, it's not just mm-hmm. young Latinas. It's Latinas that are middle age. It's Latinas that are in their 70s. They're still out there, you know, making it happen. And it gives people like me inspiration to believe like, hey, your life just doesn't end when you hit 40, you hit 50, you can still do things, you know, and a lot of these ladies, well, these ladies are younger, but I see a lot of other Latin entrepreneurs out there that are closer to my age. And I'm like, so proud. And that's what inspires me to keep going and keep trying because the world, you know, I feel like we're changing the mindset of the world and that it's not just one look it's there's all these different latinas at different levels different ages succeeding and to me that's inspiring nice ladies i think this was a really really great conversation about latina entrepreneurs and the the guests that we've had so i invite for whoever's listening to this episode please go listen to those uh those episodes past uh we'll link them somewhere we'll have them somewhere for you to go and um listen in on it. And as Diana said, take notes. Um, but lasting remarks on Latina entrepreneurship, ladies, any, any, um, any remarks in regards to that? Arriba y pa'lante. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, excited to see who we bring on. <laughs> yeah, I have some ideas. Next I, have interviews. Some, I, I have some really interesting Latina entrepreneurs that I've been following that I can't wait to share with you ladies. And hope I'm hoping, cross your fingers, that I can get them on the show because I, they're just amazing. We will. Know? We will. We're getting yeah, them. I, don't, I can't share because it's for next season. So, But I'm working. <laughs> I have some, I'm always working behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to make things happen. You got to stay tuned for that. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yes. I think stay like tuned. if there was a song right now that would be an anthem for all these Latinas, I really think it's that Becky G song, The Flame and Hot. You know, if you listen to the words, no one can take your vibe. You know, you got the fire inside and all these ladies have the fire inside and nobody's mm-hmm. taking their vibe. And when I hear that song, I'm going to jump up and like, yes. Yes. So they're smart with that song. I think it should win an Academy Award, you know, when the award season comes next year. Becky G should definitely win. I want to thank you ladies for coming on with me today and talking about Latina entrepreneurship, because as you know, we have a very special event coming for Latina entrepreneurs there down in Texas, especially if you're in Houston, Texas, if you want to travel into Texas, we're holding a half day conference ladies in October, the middle of October. I can't give a date just yet, but it's an opportunity to come. And as I said, and I really, really, truly believe this a lot of the times that yes, information that's out there, that's free, that's accessible, that you can learn. Sometimes your business grows based on the people that you network and collaborate with. So with that being said, ladies, thank you so much for coming on here and having a conversation with me. And as, as, as always with that, bye. listen to our episodes. If you think this is an episode that you think to yourself, ah, so-and-so would actually like this, please share it. And as a matter of fact, while you're down there at our episodes on our little rosters, whether it's Spotify, Apple, then the, wherever you're listening to, give us a like, um, tell somebody about it. Uh, this is, you know, information for someone out there, which is why we're talking about it. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, all those amazing things. What did you think of the conversation? If you enjoyed what you heard, let us know in the comments. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you for listening to the Latina Leadership Podcast, and we will see you next time.